Welcome back, everybody, to a Game of Thrones. Today, our poor, uh, poor Babby, whatever her name is again, Marble, yeah, Princess Marble, I'm clearly very attached to not knowing her name, still is suffering from her grayscale, not only that, she's developing something else as well. We've got fever, rash, chances are she's dead as dicks, I hate to say it, but the maester has come to us with an option here. We can stop the mustard poultice and scalding hot baths, and instead, hack off her arms, try and save her life. I mean, even if we go ahead and do this... There is a strong chance that whatever she's developing here might just kill her as well. Especially if she gets... Because she will get severely injured if it's successful. So... Oh, there's also a... Whoa, whoa, so it's a 2% chance she gains one-handed and severely injured. And dies? 2% chance of gaining one-handed, severely injured, dying. 6% chance of no effect... Okay, so that's a little bugged. I think that's actually supposed to be the other way around. That it's a 74% chance of her dying, 17% chance of severely injured, blah, blah, blah. It, it's all put it under the same option there. So basically, it's 2% chance she's dying. We've got a, an accumulative, like, 90-something percent chance that nothing will happen. And then there's also a chance that she'll lose the grayscale on top of that. So, hey, um, I, yeah, I guess we have no choice. Go for it. Nothing happened. Unsurprisingly, the 98% chance of nothing happening resulted in being the thing that would that would happen here. I think she's dead. Now, don't get me wrong. As I said yesterday, it's all kind of swings around about slow, but every cloud has a silver line in that we have salt is... Did I... I didn't click me there, thank you. I think I accidentally clicked on the Guardian. We have salt coming up next, who apparently has a pet cat. More importantly, prodigy and attractive. So this kid... To take over from us would be would be pretty fantastic. I mean, this kid, don't get me wrong, our firstborn daughter wasn't bad at all. She was prodigy, but this kid has the bonus of also being attractive as well. So, I mean, if she were to die, it would be a terribly sad event because any prodigy kid dying is, is a terrible event. But also, we're getting an upgrade. So, hey, you know what? Let's consider this. She's got measles as well. Oh, you, you poor thing. Minus two health from that one. Minus three health from the grayscale. Uh, bedridden is minus two. We've also apparently scolded her in a mustard bath. Off my court position, it's gonna make no difference, is it? She she is almost certainly dead at this stage. Bedridden, age of eight. That's a, that's a real tragic story right there. But on the plus side, we can play as our son next. Now that brings me on to the next point. Why don't we carry on doing what we did with our character and manure for th for the rest of the campaign? So when this character comes of age and he's capable of being landed, we'll just play as him. We'll just move over to play as that character, and we'll see if we've got Sil up to the up to up to a stage where she's capable of running this round by herself. That way we as the player don't have to do all the boring wars like, oh, let's do a vassalization against Drake's grave and then fight every single person in Westeros every single time. We can let the AI do a bit more and then we can do the character building for that character and then when he's ready to take over, you know, carry on with the big walls, with the reach and then do all the, the, the boring shit, leave that to the AI. I think that's a good plan. Now, because we're planning on doing that, Apparently, how the skin changes work is they have to basically approach you and say, Hey, you can be a magic dog. Why didn't you join our society? I don't want to wait for them to ask us, because, of course, if we are going forward with that, then chances are we're going to be playing as that kid, maybe before they've got in touch with us. Also, bear in mind that there are three members of the skin change. I don't want the society to be destroyed or anything like that. So, we're in. Hacker voice. I've, I've brute forced us into the skin changes. So apparently we can attend gatherings of skin changes. Meet others who share the gift. All two of them. Um, Pack sister gives us plus one marshal. We can learn the secrets of skin taming from the elders. So, uh, and apparently carve a runic weirwood stuff. These sound cool. The, the higher level powers sound cool. This one seems a bit boring. I'm kind of hoping we could just rank up and then, uh, yeah, all we need is 750 favor. What are we getting right now? 12 per month. I don't know if there are any missions in this society. It might seem... I, th I think it's a bit bare bones, this society, right now. Um, obviously, because there's not many people who are going to be able to join it. There's not many people powerful the Old Gods magic, especially in the base game, let alone now when the Old Gods are still a, you know, an established religion. So I don't know how well they fleshed it out, but we'll obviously we'll, uh, we'll hopefully make some progress throughout that. Now, in terms of us, like I said, I want our character, when we actually do take control of the Empire, to be doing the big opportunistic wars. So I'm looking at things here. I'm thinking, obviously, we need to get Ashmark. Obviously, we want to tidy up the rest of the Westlands because that's a complete mess. What about the Iron Islands, though? Because as it stands, those guys are super... They're just really splintered right now. House Hall, Andal, Faith of the Seven. Uh, I mean, they, they've only got, what, 6,000 troops, barely any land there. We've got, apparently, the, the Empire. What the hell is going on there? The Empire of the Iron Islands, inverted commas, has 3,300 men. I mean, we would be able to sweep all of this up. Now, what I'm thinking is we hire a load of mercenary bands, let some money save up, hire a load of mercenary bands, just declare every war for all of these provinces simultaneously. We've wars vassalized, right? So we declare war. Oh, we can invade? Oh, that makes... Oh, of course we can invade. What am I talking about? Um, what do we need to be able to do that? Uh, blah, 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 blah. We just need more piety. Okay. 
I'm going to change tactic a little bit then, because we not only need piety for um, doing those invasions, but many of you point out, the top corner on yesterday's episode, for example, said, if we get enough piety, if we sacrifice enough prisoners, we can regrow our, our face and our, our arms, and we can get rid of the gonorrhea and, and all of that stuff. We can, we can rebuild ourselves using the magics of the old gods, but we've just got to do a bit of a, bit of a sacrifice first. So, um, yeah, as it says there, we need one dark magic, we need 250 piety, then we can cure ourselves our ailments, gonorrhea being otherwise mostly uncurable. Um, then we've got cure yourself of your malformations with two dark magic, 500 piety, we need 16 learning, but to be fair, we've got the dark candle, we could just take the scholarship focus. I was going to do that anyway, that was going to be my point, that we'll take scholarship, we'll take uh, theology to try and really buff ourselves up, get as much... Uh, piety as possible through these events. Why can't we take a uh, scholarship out of interest? Um, oh, right. Wow. Diligent, erudite, scholar, mystic. Right, so we have no interest in it. That makes a lot of sense. So what we really should do, it doesn't make much high sen high, uh, sense for the high priest to be the one, you know, observing the stars, disproving the gods, whatever else that is in uh, that is in CK2. What we ideally want to do then, you remember the go out option? That allows us to become a mystic. I don't remember the, the order we have to do it in now. We should do that as much as possible then. So the next time we get that option, we have to be at peace to do that. We've got to build up some piety anyway. We'll build up some gold, build up some piety, wait to peace, hopefully get mystic. Get into the uh, get into either scholarship or theology. Ideally, scholarship so we can get the plus two learning, so that we can actually regrow our limbs. Then after that, when we've built up enough, we'll go for the Iron Islands. I think is our first portal call. Ashamark comes next. I want to take out the Iron Islands just because they are still raiding us, even though they are at civil war like that. And bear in mind, we've got all of the coast surrounding them right now. I think it paints a pretty big target on our back. So we deal with that at some stage. For the time being, then. Oh no, find some pain. Damn it. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, we need to get these limbs dealt with before we really do anything major. Same with same with gonorrhea as well. That's a minus two health. At the rate we're going, we're not going to live much longer anyway. I found a rare book in the public library. At home, you realize it would be a fun to your library. So this is probably the um, the library building that we built in the God's Fort, right? Uh, we do, yeah, we do have the library. That's probably also why when we played as this, uh, when we inherited the empire from our father, why we inherited about a dozen books as well, because he's just been buying a shitload of stuff. Um... Return it, I'm not a thief. Or we steal it. Lose 100 prestige, 50 piety, and we get the testimony of Mushroom. No, we're not going to do that. It's just an excuse to get some piety. Like I said, when we're trying to save up piety, stealing books is probably not the best way to uh, to be able to manage that. Who is Lord Paramount? Oh, Lord Paramount of the North? Oh, he actually gave away the North. Who did he give it to out of interest? Uh... Okay, what, what, I mean, oh, he's based all the way up there. I was going to say, he's not a, it's just part of the Northern Clan statue there. He's just a randomly generated house of Shepherd's Hearth. Married into House Bolton, though. So I suppose he does have some legitimacy. Okay, fair enough. I'm not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. We weren't interested in keeping the Kingdom of North by any stretch of imagination. Bear in mind, we've already got the Eerie. That will be our sort of, um, that will be our air title. So you know how, you know, Stannis was made, was given Dragonstone, which is his standard um, heir's title for the Iron Throne. Rhaegar had it before Stannis because he was next in line to the throne. Then obviously Robert had his kids and whatnot. That the Eyrie will be our equivalent of that, our, our, our heir title. So we'll uh, we'll dish that out to our son when he's of age and then we can obviously play as him afterwards. Maybe not the kingdom, but we'll give him at least the duchy. My queen, I humbly ask you to intervene. Uh, no. So we're going to say, well, we're going to order him to stand down. Then we'll say, uh, we, we obviously want to... I guess we'll just go for that one then. Lose 50 prestige. I'm not interested in up, uh, upsetting the, the King of the North, and we won't unless we actually do take one of these options. We'll just say I'll allow it. Uh, we want to save it with gold as well, so we don't particularly want to waste any money on him there. Ah, oh, nice work. Poor fighter. Now, when is it we can force him to train? It's when he's like eight. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'll keep a very close eye on that as well as we build up this prestige and gold. 80% chance of uh, giving successful treatment, 20% chance of gaining permanent nerve damage. Concoction is 50 50. So, so less of a risk. I mean, 50 50 is still pretty decent odds. 80 20 is very good odds, but if we do get that 20, we're stacking on yet another health malice along with our missing limbs and the gonorrhea and whatever else. Um,. I think we might have to take the risk in that case. I, I think I'm going to do it. You know, we, we can't really make things worse at this stage, so go for it. Um, Lord Tion, stand down. Why do I care? I mean, this guy's a... This guy is is a high lord. This guy is a lowborn. There we go. Or not a lowborn, but but a, a, a lower rank lord. Oh, god damn. Why are we, why are we stuck with all this bureaucracy? Commanding me to abdicate title. I have no part of this scheme. Absolutely not. Right, let's see. Come on. Cure my, cure my pain. Come on, okay, we don't care about that. That's a new guy I've invited to court. There we are, fan pain removed. Okay, that's a great start. Then we'll try and execute some prisoners. I don't know if we're allowed to execute any of these prisoners. Tyranny by five, okay, maybe not that kid then. We call him for trial, maybe try executing him after that, but obviously that might also lead to some other issues. Um, Marissa, nothing. We, we're just going to have to go for righteous imprisonment, I think, and against maybe courtiers and things like that. Um, yeah, this is, this is not good. 
So none of these guys are, are killable, besides maybe Desmond. So we'll go ahead and call him for trial first, and if not, I'll just start righteously imprisoning people. I want to cure our character, get her up to full health, before we start... Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so, send him to the wall, send him back to his cell. Are we now allowed to execute him, then? Uh, execute, imprisoned. There we are, change fear by 10 as well, very nice. So this will give us dark magic, right? I certainly hope so. Um... No, but we've, we've executed a load of people. I've tripped a load of people out the moon door. I don't know if this is even working then in hindsight. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice already. Um, I'm going to have to look this up because I'm not entirely sure this is how it should be. Let's behead him. Let's do something a bit more personal. Maybe that will help. Um, do you get any dark magic for that? Maybe we need to sacrifice them, but I don't think we've ever had the option to sacrifice them. Um, sacrifice, sacrifice. I'm going to have a look at how this actually works because it doesn't really seem to be. Aha, okay, so through a little bit of fiddling here, I've worked out what the problem was. Suffice to say, should be working fine now. So we've got uh, one, one of these guys that we were able to write to in prison here. Jorance Gladmore, Fort of Trial by Combat, and obviously Lost. We can now sacrifice him up to the gods. We gain five fear. We gain 50 piety as well. Oh, that's a really nice way of doing it then. And then we also gain two dark magic. I'm thinking auto-stop plot should be, should be stopped. Lord Jorance was a notable and prestigious man. My priest saw of the option performing divination on his very entrails. Would yield much more accurate results than on any lesser creature. We lose 30 piety for doing that. I'm going to say no. And we gain 250 piety. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Holy shit. Okay. Um, so has that actually worked this time? Are we good? Cure your... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because look, cure your ailments is now an option. Do it. 91% chance the healing is a success. 9% chance it fails. Nice. There we go. Okay. Oh, we lose lovers, pox, and gonorrhea. Oh, shit. Well, that's incredible. Um, Midas sits the throat of a lamb, spilling its blood over your wound immediately. You feel relieved. There's a 77% chance of nothing happening. 8% chance we gain Mystic. 12% chance we gain Zealous. 4% chance we become a Lunatic. And there's 20% chance of our Priest becoming a Mystic as well. We lost it. That's really, really good. Okay, okay. So what we need to do then is turn off auto stop plots, prison absolutely everybody, and then whenever we get righteous imprisonment, obviously. And then after that stage, we can just grow ourselves back. And honestly... Maybe as Onet's character, we do stick with the Warrior Lodges. Because worst case scenario, we lose an arm, we just regrow it. Just be, we would just be this completely unkillable man. We could make our own Barrett Dondarian to some extent. Right, who we got? Um, yep, Prince Byron of the Eerie, get in prison. I'm all, all up for sacrifice you. Prat, he'd probably enjoy it. Uh, let's call him for... <laughs> I'm not sure that's entirely true. Should interrogate him now. We made a poor case. There we go. Have his head on a spike and then sacrifice him off to the old gods. Another 250 piety per kill is quite a lot, isn't it? Wow. Um... Yeah, that's pretty absurd. Okay, fair enough. And we, we need to get, what, one more sacrifice? Oh, we can just cure it now. 94% chance. Very cool. This is miraculous. We lose this figure, but we still need to do it again for our other arm as well. Fair enough. 10% um, chance of getting Mystic. We got nothing. Probably, probably okay for the time being. This is great. Wow, I can't believe how easy this is. Uh, she is an old god. She's, she's an old god's faithful. I'll let her live. How appropriate is it now that we are sacrificing these andals, andals hanging them off a weirwood tree or whatever, to cure ourselves, the high priest of the old gods? I feel like we've really, we've re we've really got it in the bag at this stage, huh? We're not doing any embargoes. Thank you very much. I never do embargoes in CK2. I wish they just wouldn't ask because they're just, it's never, never worth it. Let him rot. He wants, uh, oh, I thought he was going by trial by combat then. He made a strong case. Have his head on a spike. And then sacrifice him off. Thank you. You will now provide to me a brand new arm. This is kind of kind of ridiculous. I worry that we might be alienating a lot of our vassals. We might be bringing ourselves a uh, hell of a lot of problems if we keep doing this. Oh, do we... No, we are still one-handed, but we actually can't cure that. Um, I'm thinking maybe there's a cooldown on it. Oh, maybe because we've got a prosthetic? I don't know. Uh, apparently we can't cure our our arm missing, which is a bit of a shame given that we were obviously a, a pretty good duelist up to that stage. Let's see if we can ransom everyone out then. Yeah, that's a real shame. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter too much though. Um, we can steal another book. We're never going to steal a book. Never going to do that because. Oh, well, although I say I say that now that we can get a ridiculous amount of piety, maybe we should do that. So was it piety or prestige we need for the invasions? Because if so, we found a, a real inroad here into. Uh, it was prestige. I just wanted to double check there. Fine. So what do we want to start with then? We've got enough prestige to be honest to, in to basically invade the whole of the Iron Islands. Um, we've got a thousand gold as well. We've got the mercenary bands all basically ready to go because we haven't used them in a long time. Let's all buy rank instead. That'll be our direct vassals. So we've got what three thousand six hundred men there. That alone is not enough to take out the Iron Islands, but it'd be a good first invasion force. And to be honest, actually, if they're mercenaries, we don't need to launch all those wars simultaneously. The only reason I thought to do that is because, honestly, they're, they're all going to be called into the war anyway, most likely, if it's anything like the Andal mechanics. Um, 
Actually, yeah, that is a fair point. We should be doing that when we invade Westeros as well. You know, invade Ashamart, The Rock, Silver Hill, all of these simultaneously, because they're all going to come to each other's defense anyway, aren't they? Right, let's uh, let's raise these troops up then, team. Raise these troops up. Let's get them into position. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take the whole of the Iron Islands in one fell swoop. Excellent. Well done. My queen, I've spent the past month improving your reputation. Not only did we lose Vicious Rumors, which is minus 10, but we also lose some Tyranny as well. Oh, and all our Tyranny is gone. So our vassals are probably quite a big fan of us now. Um, actually, we are well loved. It's the power of being a female ruler right there. When you've got mostly male vassals, the only people who, there's a couple who dislike us. In fact, we should be worth it in terms of taxes. Probably just do bribe them a little bit. Um, so we've got a Lord of Case. Don't really care about you too much. He's obviously a guy we subjugated there. I'll just shout a bit of cash. Why not? We've got a thousand gold. We might as well bring a bit of stability and a bit of, uh, a bit of happiness to the realm. There we go. Nothing to worry about. I, the last thing we want is a big inter realm rebellion, you know, a big, a big civil war over faith or something like that when we're off fighting all of the Ironborn simultaneously. It's probably a recipe for disaster. Let's get our troops in position then. Um, Sweet sister. That's not what we want to go anymore. We want to send them over to here. Let's get those boats over there. I'll, I'll only take the boats we need. In fact, right there is the boats we need. I should have, shouldn't have raised that many. That was that was way too optimistic, huh? Um, let's drop them quickly before they all leave port then. And let's just raise them from here. Thank you very much, Cape of Eagles. Okay, let's go for it, team. So here's the plan. House Harlora currently sieging down Pike. Now, that is completely separate to the guys we're going to go for in, in Old Wit because they, they've got all these weird separate provinces instead. Take out the Empire title first, just in case because of this mega war, they all recombine into one big kingdom. Doubt they will. I think they've been splintered for quite some time. When we declared this war and declared all of them simultaneously, then we'll raise our regular troops, get all the boats over here. But we want to make sure that this force is going to land and, and at least decisively win one of, one of the wars for us anyway. Um, right, so let's let them at least get a bit closer. Oh god, it's the, it's the 31st. That means we've got, we've got some lag. I'm glad that we sort of wait to go past that before declaring war. Anyway, um, we want to go Invasion of Old Wick. And then they will honor their obligations. I'm sure they very much will. Then we want to declare war on uh, Pike as well. So we go for Great Wick after that. Then we want to go to war with you guys who are also separate. So we'll go Harlock, given that's his capital after all. And then these guys, these guys are also independent. Invasion of Salt Cliff, very nice. And is that it? Is that all of them now? I think that's everybody we can possibly go to war with. Are you independent? You're not. Are you independent? That's also fine. Right. And what about Lonely Light? The Lonely Light is still under the Iron Islands. Okay, fair enough. There we go. Look at that. This is this is going to be pretty fun, I think. Let's get... Uh, oh, it's a war council, isn't it? So we've got to bear in mind. We've put on the council here. We're going to be sacked after things are all said and done. Uh, kept in the household guard. There we go. Oh, we've got a household guard? I didn't establish that. So I guess... Oh, we can perform a mass sacrifice now. Wait, What? Because we did one sacrifice, we can now perform a mass sacrifice? Oh, we still need to be cruel, zealous. Maybe we got a trait that gave us that? I'm not sure. Oh, well, it doesn't matter too much. Maybe our priest became a mystic and that did it. I have no clue. It could be it could be any number of things. Okay, uh, let's get these guys together. Let's get you guys over to uh, Seaguard, preferably, not Emmons Rest. So let's move them. I think Seaguard probably has decent supply, right? Let's just double check. 44,000. Yeah, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Okay, there we go, team. Everyone head over there. That means that the Northern Troops are also going to be a bit more practical. They're not going to take years and years and years and decades to get there. We've got, honestly, some of the best commanders. We get 32, 26, 23 there, leading the Siege of Old Wick. More to the point, the reason I went for Old Wick first is they're not going to be able to to counter us there. It's a single island. They either have to come off a of boat or they have to take a straight crossing, both of which would cripple them, unless they've got like 10,000 troops. I am with child. My husband will be pleased. Thank you, husband. Very cool. Okay, now that's what I was worried about. So so they've now all combined. We've, we've lost to Castle Spell of X. They've all started to combine back into one big kingdom. I wasn't expecting it to happen so soon, I'll be honest. I send the boats down to Martlet Bay and then the troops over to Seagull. That's nice and confusing. You guys might as well stand down. Those guys are just going to help out under their own steam. I might drop these troops. We don't really want to wait for 260. There we go. Okay, let's get these guys over as soon as we possibly can. I'm going to be a bit more strategic about this. So ideally, we want to put troops, say, here and here to be able to block movement between all of these islands. Um... I mean, Orkmont is a pretty good site, and obviously Volmark as well. There, we'll be a bit more strategic about where we drop our men, but for the time being, I'm kind of thinking Pebbleton would be pretty good. Blocks off Pike, unless I want to go the long way, but obviously we'll see them going the long way, and we should be able to... Uh, I imagine the distance between these two provinces is less than the distance between Saltcliffe and Hammerhorn, so the second their movement lock, we might be able to move in and use that to our advantage. It should be taking a straight crossing into us there. Okay, let's get into position, team. That will just casually siege down me. I haven't got to worry about attrition or anything like that. So we'll just leave those guys there. Move you guys over to Pebbleton. We might have to split the armies, though. Um, do nothing for now. Do nothing for now. I don't want to... There we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. So let's bring Silt, Mathis, and Elwood. Now, how long until they get there? We've got three days of morale gain. Unfortunately, that's not going to be a huge amount, I'll be honest. But hey, we should still have them. Um, oh, it's going to be close in hindsight. What is... Uh... 
I can't believe that straight crossings in this give give that negative, yet having mounted like a 100% light infantry attack. It's pretty ridiculous. We should be fine, though. We do outnumber them. They, we do not have much... What are we looking at? No, oh, shit. 67%. Ooh, yikes. That is a bit risky. Um, okay. Okay. Let, well, let's just, let's just see how well we do. I think we should be fine, especially with the commanders on the center. Oh, especially when they send that at us. 13, 16, 17. Don't get me wrong. They're not bad at all, but we're just good in this scenario. Sounds like a fair investment. Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll take some war knowledge. We're still going to lose probably a decent amount of troops or not, or they're just crap. Okay, that's fine by me. Um, we might as well chase them down then. So, are we going to beat them there? Have we got, like, an organizer? Are we an organizer? We're not. What about one of our commanders? Um, we've got Rousing Leader, which is very good. Oh! So, our guys have joined the Warrior Lodge. Look at that. Stampede Leader gives 30% mounted troops, and a Rousing Leader gives 27 and 27 to both morale, damage, and defense. Very nice. Have we got any organizers just so we can slightly beat them there? We don't. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll go for it. We'll go for it. It might be okay. We get movement speed bonus for our marshal just as a base thing. There we go. Nice. Okay. That's those dealt with. So this, this war is against two, exactly. Um, Saltcliff. <laughs> Why so serious? That was that was the worst impression I think I've ever done. That's hilarious, though. That's his war paint. That battle will take no time. His capital's probably going to fall relatively soon. We've still got just thousands of troops just starving to death waiting for us to transport them over here. Let's drop these guys over in Harlow or something. It's a real shame they came back together as quickly as they did, so I was kind of hoping we could do some more damage, but not a big deal. Uh, what's that? Extra tithe on the church. 25%? Oh, no. I think we're going to say no. Um, local revolt risk plus 2.5%. I don't really want to be fighting that right now, especially as peasant revolt scale to our levy size. So, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, just, just to get a tiny little bit more gold. We're already making a mountain of gold anyway. It's not really ne necessary, is it? Troublesome peasants. Oh, never mind. We're, high we're taxing the shit out of them anyway. Okay, that's fine. Pretend I pretend I said nothing. Right, so we've got to be careful for a little bit because we are Perganat and in the final months there. So we can't lead armies for a very tiny bit. But I think we should be good anyway. I mean, we've got... Ah, oh, shit. We need, a, we need a better commander on that center then. Otherwise, they're going to attrition down. Um want to go for andro my good man so we've got like what's that 40 43 000 troops on the island islands or 29 000 i think we're gonna be fine i've got some other troops on standby here but i don't think it's really necessary um so we can split this army in half even though we don't have enough boats let's split these guys down then yeah let's send another seven thousand off just go and casually siege something down it's complete overkill but they haven't got any troops so we're gonna have to do a lot of sieging unfortunately only because all their troops have been dying on all their massive civil war so there's no battle war score available so Guess we could transfer some boys over. There we go. We might as well. Um, in fact, we could just use that as a stepping stone, couldn't we? Send those guys over there. And the second they're off, we'll have these guys move onto the boats and move off to Black Tide. Give it a minute. There we go. So let's get you. Can we set a move route like that? Oh, you can't. So if you hold down shift and see you too. Loads of people ask me this. It's kind of surprised that people don't know this is a mechanic. But if you hold down shift, you can set them a specific move route. So let's say, for example, oh, we want to do a tour of the area. We'll go all the way around here and up around here. There you go. So you sort of see it'll do a, a, a weird move route depending on what you want. Apparently, you can't set them to get onto the boats and then immediately straight off. It's a bit of a shame. Oh, it doesn't matter too much. Anyway, right, let's get them on there and then move them. Oscar. Oh, it's tw twins. Shit, okay. Um, Emmon. That's a name we haven't had for a long, long time. My good man, Emmon Mud. And Harris. Uh, Harris the Attractive. It's an attractive stone. Honestly, can't say I've ever thought of it before. Um, a nice, a nice, strong basalt. Welcome, B Basalt. Join us. Uh, you can be trained in. What have, what have we not got right now? Oh, yikes. We're running out of education here. We, we've, we've, gone a, we've gone a bit too thin here. Right, let's go for... Is our daughter still alive? Holy shit. She's still alive? My god. Okay, uh, and then Emmon. Oh, god. Emmon's probably going to die. So, I mean, we'll give him humility. And then that one will probably become back available to us. Okay, there we go. This is pretty good. Shouldn't we're only going to get a Dutch out of it, but hey. Oh, wow. Okay. Go to the Summer Island Reformation. So let's go to the Summer Island Valyrian Reformation. Obviously, our Reformation. There was also YT, but obviously we've taken YT out of things since then. It's really interesting how much easier or how much more frequent Reformation is in the Game of Thrones world than, than the base game. I suppose they start with a lot of their holy sites, though, don't they? Especially uh, especially YT. Basically, start with all of them. They've just got to get someone with enough piety and whatnot. Uh, taking the drum tower, but there is no one here. Never mind. Okay, we'll quickly bash this one down. Then we can put her actually back in charge of that army. I'm going to salt this one down. Get it get it out of the way. 50%. Not too bad. But again, they haven't already got any troops. Maybe when we... No, I was going to say maybe when we leave, they'll raise some armies. But they just straight up don't have any. Um, it's like 1,700 over there, which is just going to get melted. There we go. Very nice. Absolutely no war score out of that, though. Done. There we go. Mr. Joker's in prison. Let's offer him peace. Enforce demands. Thank you very much. Whose prison is in now? Still in our still in our vassals. That's fine. Right, so there's one duchy down. Um, it's still going to take a long time to obviously pick apart the Iron Islands. We're going to have to hope for 
We're gonna have to hope for the more to splinter. Oh, wow, our son's educator. 50% chance of getting a trade fighter, 20% chance of duelist. That would be fantastic. Train fighter. Okay, you know what? Not too terrible, not too terrible. What? What's? Oh, we're a formidable fighter. Right, so we can train him right, right up. Again, you can't force train from level 3 to level 4, but it's just a random chance. What we should do then is actually... Uh, well, I'll firstly set some of these minor titles up, but let's also go over to our Master of Arms. Replace him with preferably a formidable fighter. Sorry to say this. Let's sack, uh, sack him off. I mean, not only is this guy better, but is also a better fighter. Have him train children. Have him train... No, 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 no. Have him train... Excuse me. Have him train children. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Very useful. Uh, why is he doing that? You see that? It's just changing the map mode. Oh, what a useful button. Nice. That's, that's a very convenient place to put a terrain map mode, huh? That, maybe it's because we're at war or something like that. It doesn't matter too much. Maybe if we unpause it for a second, it should... Uh, might update. Still won't work. Okay, fuck you. We'll wait till the war's over then. I guess there's something something sort of conflicting with that. Probably because he is a commander already. Um, might be commanding his own troops. That's probably more likely. What if we forbid him? Um, we resign him as a commander? Did I make him a commander? Oh, it doesn't, it, just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for the timing. But after that, we'll, we'll make sure that the uh, young, or whatever his name is, young Salt is being trained up as much as possible here. Oh, that's nice. We became friends with the weird gray scaly girl. Ironically, that we named her Marble, and she's actually turning into stone's gone all white and, uh, her, her skin's gone all white and stony there. Are you still alive? Because I really was kind of banking on you dying. I'm not going to lie here, Chief. Um, hopefully the gray scale will kill her before she hits... A legitimate age. Uh, we can manually swap to this character, though. Right? The only problem if we do that is that obviously we won't inherit the Empire if if it comes to that. We might end up splintering off and becoming a, a branch house accidentally. So, oh man, I guess we'll just have to go for whatever we end up with at, the, at that time. I know how just how to smooth things over. Trigger's family in the dungeon. How are we only at 66%? Look at this. We've got all of the Iron Islands on lockdown. 100% at long last. My god, I thought that would never end. Or to get one Dutch as well. That's it. That's what we ended up with. The Island of Old Wick. Well done, everyone. Very, very good war. Nice. Fucking what a waste of time that was. Um, get these get these guys over there. Drop drop all these troops. That was an absolute waste of time. If they didn't remain splinter, we would have ended up with a shitload of Dutch. We would have ended up with most of the Iron Islands. But because of the Mega War system, nothing. Absolutely nothing worth showing for. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's give this shit away then. Uh, or we might want to hang on to it, I guess, for the time being. Just to, just to keep a stronghold on the Iron Islands. Um, let's give away... We'll give away Salt Cliff, because I'm not really too interested in that one, I'll be honest with you. Uh, who are we looking for here? My religion, my culture, ruler preferably, not a sort by... Let's away Marshal. Let's start giving land to good Marshal commanders instead. Um, you can't be landed. Here you go, you can have something. What do you want, then? Um, was that actually a duchy? No, Salt Cliff is just single. Old Wit was the duchy we picked up. Uh, is that going to cause some issues? Because we now got four duchies kicking around. Case. Oh, we still need to give away Case, don't we? I was trying to annex that person. Nothing ever happens. So I guess we'll just give it to whoever likes us the most out of these two. Which will be my good friend, Quentin. Send Quentin a gift. Can we demand some conversion there? You up for it? You motherfucker. I'm still going to land him because we don't really have a choice. But that's so frustrating. Why not? Let's go out. Let's try and become a mystic again. Uh, look for a... I, I can't remember which way around it was. My feet are... Uh, that, so that gives us the thing. That gives us Gardener. See something rush around the corner. We don't know what it was. We rushed after a small animal, tried to catch it. No idea. Lose 50 prestige for running around trying to catch a mouse or something. Incredible work. Um, go on a Tory. I'm never going to do that. So let's ignore it. Dark Divination is a bit pointless as well. Um, oh, there's 10% chance of getting a Mystic from that. Ah. <gasps> we have become a Mystic. That seems kind of suitable given the whole Green Dreams, Dragon Dreams thing. Still a long time before we rank up. But now Mystic gives us a few more points there. A long time before that site is probably going to become relevant, unfortunately. Um, we could do another Dark Divination. Just keep doing it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to bother because it's just unveiling plots, basically, which chance I will find them out anyway. Let's, let's do a sacrifice. Um, prosperity and growth. Share your wisdom. That has a chance of giving a shrewd or genius or something like that. So, oh, God, hack out another eye. Can we grow it back, though, with ancestor worship? Fuck it. Why not? Let's do it. Let's grow it immediately straight back. I'm sure we put pits up plenty of, plenty of prisoners from those wars that we can... Uh, that we can sacrifice up. Who have we got? Um, Gretchel, that tiny girl. Who the fuck is Gretchel? Um, execute, fine with it. Sacrifice it to the gods. 0.25 dark magic. Probably because she was a baby. That was a, that was a bit of a waste of time, I'll be honest. What about you? Tyranny, uh, what about you? I'm just going to release these people. They're, they've never once been ransomable. They're, they're just no use to us whatsoever. Wait, why can't we? Oh, they're gone. Right, there we go. I was going to say, why the hell can't we even ransom them out? A Lord of Harlor. Change fear by 10. Very nice. Okay. Uh, change fear by five on top of that and we get two dark magic from it too i know exactly how to proceed oh we can divinate from his entrails 
Oh, look at that. Clarity of intent. We get one extra dark magic for doing that. And we get plot discovery and plot power defense. Very cool. And obviously, the 250 party is quite nice as well. This is interesting. We've already embraced the dark side of the old gods to some extent, huh? Sacrifice this guy. Off he goes. And then what about you, tiny girl? Um, you can you can be ransomed off then. I'm not content to let that be enough to, for today. Just to get two very crappy provinces in the Iron Island. That's not enough. I'm going to spend exception on the girl, given that we've got a load of cash, even though she's got great scale because she is still our heir at the end of the day. But I, I still, I don't think that's enough. I think we need, to, we need to aim much bigger than that. So we are going to go for Ashamark, like the entire thing. And like I said, if we're... Oh, we can only force Vassalize, huh? That's a bit frustrating. I thought we'd be able to invade. We only have to do one invasion per lifetime, and even then it's a duchy. What? Uh, that would be a bit shit. Okay, hang on. It do be like that. Oh, no, invasion of Castle Rock is there. Okay, fair enough, then. God knows why we can't do this when it doesn't matter too much. Right, so let's declare war. Force Vassalize this guy. He'll call in all of his pals, so we might as well take most of the Westerlands, because look, it's starting to reform under under Castle Rot there as well. I'm up for it. Force vassalize him. Um, tell me how to civil wars work. Oh, maybe you can only invade people who have an equivalent rank. Oh, no, we can invade this guy as well. Um, so, so an invasion actually gives us the title, so I'd rather invade him there. Um, can we take you? We can't take you. And then obviously declare war on you as well. So let's go invasion of Castle Rot. Can't do it because we don't have enough prestige. Ah, oh, we're missing like the tiniest little bit. Is there any way we can gain just, like, a couple of prestige very quickly? Um, look for some minerals. That'll do it. Uh, I'm sure I'll find something. God damn, I need just, like, we let some time tick, I guess, rather than rather than raising troops. Hang on. Give it a, give it a second. How, how much are we getting? We're getting 39 per month. Come on, any second now. Any se uh, we're going to have to get those mercenaries out there, though, because they are going to get smashed. Okay, here we go. Everyone else is joining in. As it, oh, now we can't declare war on him because he's now in another war, right? Yep. Okay, never mind. Should have planned that out a little bit better, I admit. I didn't realize that we would be four prestige under. Okay, um, let's get our troops together in, like, River Run, then, for example. Drop the rally point in Seaguard. This is going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to have to be very, very fast with this war to avoid it dragging on for decades and decades and decades. Um, whose war did they join as an ally, mostly? So, ideally, it would be better to deal with this one first. Actually, it won't matter, because they might be able to join that one afterwards anyway. Um, oh, they're allowed to join both, so it makes no difference. I thought they might not be able to join another ally against us because they were allied in a different war. Won't make any damn difference at the end of the day. You know what? Let's, let's deal with Ashmart then, because that seems like the easier war to start off with. Let's get all of these troops just piled on around here. Um, so we're also trying to invade this one as well. So is that the invasion of Castamere? Yeah, so th th just got to take that province. Actually, we'll send some of these troops down to Payne Hall, given that's his capital, and deal with that one as well. Oh, a loyal servant. Genius mystic woman. That's nice. That's what we got from our ancestor worship. Kind of a bit shit, but never mind. And we found some minerals in our capital. What did we get? Uh, iron. That gives us... Oh, iron was really good. It gave us a bunch of bonuses, didn't it? Uh, yeah, look at that. Wow. So a very small tax malice in exchange for a pretty decent amount of troop bonuses. So I'm all right with that one. Um, right. So this is going to take some careful planning just so that we don't end up getting our ass handed to us here and all of our troops being wiped out from random little land all attacks. Good first battle. They decided to attack us, but pretty, pretty risky. Wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I'm going to... Okay, fine. There we go. He's accepted it. It's a less opinion loss. That's all I really care about at the end of the day. Right, catch those guys as well. I don't think they're particularly... I do need to merge these troops, but I'm trying to dodge around all of this uh, all of this game lag here. Right, merge them together. Let's get Silt in the center, and I'm just going to blitz this war down as quick as we possibly can. Um, that's the war goal for the other one. So let's get this army together to quite a decent size. And then 22,000 go for his capital. I think that's more than fair. Okay, this should be easy, in hindsight. I think this is going to be a lot easier than expected, because obviously, for, as long as we're fast here, you know, even if Dawn has joined, they've still got to get all the way up here before they can do any damage. And I think as long as we keep picking off these smaller units, we should be okay. I'm going to assault that down. It's a little risky, but it's still viable. Have his family stuck in the dungeon. There we go. That's a great start. Okay, I'm still going to assault this down as much as possible. Like I said, speed is of the essence here. It's a war of attrition. Um, do you want to reinforce those guys? Oh, House High Tower. Take him out. So Lord, Lord of the Reach right there coming in to try and stop us. Don't stand a chance. Oh, that's it. Huh. Done. Easy. No problem. Thank you. Uh, reinforce that then. We might as well kill off as many as possible. Send all of these troops to Goldshire. That's complete overkill. But like I said, speed is of the essence here. I'd rather lose a few troops to uh, attrition or something like that rather than... Those guys getting the chance to build it together. These gigantic armies. We're going to go and kill that one first, actually. There we go. Okay, we should be fine. Prepare to die, Grandview scum. Run back to Rainhouse. Of course, we're going to win any personal combat as well. Even though even though we're a little bit of a, 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 bit, a bit of a mangled mess at this stage. How are we doing with this capital? Just hold that one down. 56%. Take the war gold. Honestly, that should be it. This is really nice. We're in such a good position here. Granted, we're only able to attack 
probably our immediate borders. If we tried to declare war on Dawn or something like that, for example, they'd be able to get all their troops together with all of these allies as well. Might be a bit more tricky. Might be a bit more tricky. But these immediate border ones that, I mean, especially Ashmar is completely surrounded by us at that stage. That one's fairly straightforward. There we go. Just quickly alternate some sieges. And that should be... Uh, it should be a pretty good continuation on with the Manure's legacy. Not as much as I wanted to go for, but I didn't realize we couldn't declare as many wars as, uh... I mean, even that, like, Castamere would have been the only other war we'd have been able to declare on anyway, even if we had the prestige. So I was kind of hoping we could try and get the whole of the Westerlands in one war, but just didn't have the borders for it, unfortunately. And there we go, 91%, and with this one, I'm hoping it'll be it. Um, Placating with Flattery. Actually, we can take that one out as well. Oh, God, what is this? After having consulted some of the world's most respected diviners and having analysed sightings from several realms, I've come to the conclusion we're entering a into a favourable period of our time. Um, wait, entering into a favourable period? What? The skies are clear, the weather is stable, no misalignment of the heavily, heavily bodies threaten us with doom. There must be a better interpretation. I mean, how is that... The f oh, I, I, f I thought they'd like miss... I, I mean, the fault is kind of imply implies that it would be uh, a bad thing. You know, no one ever refers to the San Andreas fault as being like a like a nice good old time. Anyway, um, let's just go for it. Prophetic stars. There we go. Tax modifier up 15%. Very nice. It changed our magic by three. So uh, that's what I didn't understand. Like, it's already a good sign, so we're going to interpret it better. That sounds like a reaction if it was a bad situation. Just seems a bit weirdly written, that's all. Okay, well, that's good news. Uh, already our unstoppable armies are even more unstoppable. Well, apparently they are... Fairly stoppable with sieges like that, though, so be careful. Boom, thank you very much. Hey, that's, that's a little bit better. What, what are you guys? Oh, the north. Right, right. And there we go. Everything's back together. Now, here's another thing I noticed as well when I was set up for this episode. Valyria is very, very strong. Uh, it doesn't really look like it right now because they are in the middle of a mega war, but they have everything. They basically have the whole of Essos. And when, when the mega war is over, it looks really, really cool. It's basically just this big sea of red, and on this side, a big sea of blue. So then, And obviously, we need to get Andalos to be able to end this campaign. So, to, to, to finally really have changed history there. So, this is going to be a real showdown eventually when we get... Maybe it'll only be a few more episodes because I think tidying this stuff up is going to not really take much time at all. But this, though, this is going to be a real interesting battle. Might be one of the biggest Game of Thrones wars we've ever had. In the meantime, though, thank you all for watching. I apologize that that uh, Iron Island war was a little lackluster, but it's not a lot we could have done about that. It's just the, the, the Mega War system giveth, the Mega War system taketh. I think in the future, if we ever play the Game of Thrones one again, I will probably just disable it. It It, it is kind of cool. It does let you get that independence and whatever, but it's also kind of a pain in the ass at the same time. Like, some of the mechanics, it's, it's obviously not really... The game's not designed for it. Let's put it... That's the most diplomatic way I can put it right now. And uh, the, the, we've encountered way more issues than I think we've gained benefits from it. So in the future, I think we'll probably put that one aside and just stick with the regular old CK2 mechanics. That way I won't have to respond every episode to Why the North Independent. Thank you to the insane top tier level patrons for supporting the channel, making this series possible. It's kind of gone on for quite a long time. I appreciate that. So uh, we're, in the, we're in the final few hours now, I think, now, though. Um... You know, maybe another week or so. We, we might be able to beat Valeria at that stage. Or we'll get our ass handed to us. And either way, it'll be a good ending. Thank you to Alchemia, Anthony Gawley, Sunikura to Atmos, his average game of 14 team, Baking Hit, and Ben Hofflin, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Facunda Vasquez, Frederick, Gogolus, Harik, Harry McGowan, Iguana Squad, James Shea, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nordstrust, Necrofillin, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Skaz, Megmustain, Somnus, Shea, T Bag Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McClam, Bakuas Backers, Varangon, William Green, and Zazzy711 for the support. The insane to lovers on Patreon. Thank you guys for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well to the following patrons who are including, but very much not limited to, Uwu Daddy, Asaro, Anna Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Attila, Austin Taylor, Betsmas Max, Better Learn, Black Double H, Blood for the Blood God, Boyne Gunn, Chris, Corgi Circus, David Van Diepen, Daniel Pete, Don, Dunk22 and 7, Emerald Beam, Foosh, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Circus, Gothmo, Grey, Haji Damar, I Am Sagatair, I See the Great, Jackson P, Jay Lehrer, Jacob Wolfie, Jason Sushu, Jose, Jeebus Crust, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, Jobs, Lucky Sister, Jilly Vondel, Joseph Beer, Justin Plock, Justin Rules, Justin Walters, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke Wallace, Manuel Bosic, Mastolp, Monty, Mosey Sampson, My Name Isn't Dio, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lundberg, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Brian Hooper, Sam Kier, Shardul, Shari, Smirtworm, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, Sweet Tea, Talar, Voodoo Mumbo, Void Prince Kibo, Will Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yellow Four, Yorkus, Zach, Zetlock, and Zico2. Thank you guys all for your support over at Patreon. See you guys all tomorrow for hopefully some real progress chance i will do it we'll do a character swap tomorrow so we'll go back to a, a small duchy let the empire grow naturally because i feel like this character is i'm just i just can't utilize it well enough there are too many inroads and the air would be so so much better at managing the 500 600 so simultaneous walls they'd be able to manage than me